The module 1 of Practical Research 1 is entitled Nature and Inquiry of Research. This module 1 will talk about the nature and inquiry of research, which include the importance of research, the characteristics, processes, and ethics of research, and difference between quantitative and qualitative research. Before we proceed to the definition of research, let us talk about the importance of research. Research is a tool for building knowledge and efficient learning. It is also the means to understand various issues and an aid to business success and a way to prove lies to support. Research also is a mean to find, gauge, and seize opportunities. It is a seed to sharing valuable information and nourishment and exercise for the mind. And how about the importance of research to man? It says that research has improved quality of life. Research has improved education. Research has satisfied man's needs and quest for knowledge. And last, research has reduced a burden for work. Our world is full of mysteries. It is full of beauty and wonders that cannot easily be understood by human beings. Fortunately, the world is also intelligible. We can know, understand, explain, and in some manner predict the events happening in our world. However, we must admit the fact that we cannot know, understand, explain, and predict everything. There are things that are still beyond human comprehension. That is why research introduces. So what is a research? Research, it is the systematic and objective analysis and recording of controlled observations that may lead to the development of generalizations, principles of theories resulting in prediction and possibly ultimate control of events. It is a systematic activity that is directed toward the discovery and development of an organized body of knowledge. It is searching for a theory, for testing theory, or for problem solving. It is also a systematic, controlled, empirical, critical investigation of hypothetical prepositions about presumed relations among natural phenomena. And it is a systematic collection and interpretation of data to illuminate, describe, or explain new facts and relationships. Specifically, Research is directed toward the solution of a problem, emphasizes the development of generalizations, principle of theories, helping in predicting future occurrences. It is based on observable experience or empirical evidence, demands accurate observation and description, involves gathering new data or using existing data for a new purpose characterized by carefully designed procedures that apply analysis, requires expertise, strives to be objective and logical, involves the quest for answers to unresolved problems, is characterized by patient and inherited activity, is carefully recorded and reported. There are five salient characteristics of a quality research. Empirical, logical, cyclical, analytical, or mathematical, and reliable. A research is empirical because it is something based on first-hand information, own experience, facts, and unquestionable evidence. It is never based on mere opinions and hearsays. It is logical because it follows a process. There are specific stages that a researcher must follow so that the research will become valid producing reliable results. Research starts with a problem and ends with another problem. This makes it cyclical. The starting point of a research is any problem that it intends to solve. But after the conduct of the research, the research may find out other areas that need to be further studied, thus ending in another research problem. When researching, a researcher has to analyze data to come up with the meaning of the collected information. This makes it analytical. Although being analytical is more of a characteristic of qualitative research, 
both the two bank and analysis to bring out the essence and meaning of collected data. With numerical data as primary information for quantitative research, a statistical analysis is a requisite in treating the data. This makes it highly mathematic. Research being based on own experience and incontestable information produce a valid and reliable results. With this nature, research is reliable or dependable, highlighting its integrity to become a basis of other knowledge seekers. A research starts with a problem. A student who endeavors in any research must consider a pressing problem that needs to be explored and addressed. This is the beginning of a research. After choosing from an array of problems, the researcher can now tentatively formulate his research title. When the research title and problem have been properly aligned, the research question can be listed down highlighting the boundaries of the study. Of course, pertinent review of relevant literature is needed to point out the needs or gaps of a previous researches that can be addressed by the study being conceptualized. A good literature review should be done to see what has been done in the past. The review can also point out what can be done. Hence, a thorough review is necessary. Once the preliminaries have been established, the design approach can now be decided on whether be it quantitative, qualitative, or mixed. When the approach is already finalized, the research tool can be corrupted. A researcher can opt to search for available research tool or can opt to make his own. Before moving on to the next stage, the researcher has to see the alignment between and among the research title, the research questions, and the research tool. If they are aligned, then a stepping into the next stage can be done. If there are not yet aligned, a fixation, modification, and alignment can be done. Once the tools are ready, data collection follows. Data, obviously, can be voluminous and hard to manage. That is why sorting is done before the treatment. The treatment of the data depends on the approach applied in the study. It can be statistical for quantitative and thematic analysis for qualitative. If the treatment is done, Presentation of results or findings can follow. Different presentations, again, can be used for the different approaches. Once the results have been analyzed and presented, the relevant conclusions, insights, and recommendations can be formulated. Next is ethics of research. Ethics are the principles and guidelines that help us uphold and safeguard the things we value. When we think of ethics, in general, we associate it to what is right and how it is done right. The American Educational Research Association has offered five broad principles in safeguarding ethics. First is professional competence. Researcher acts only in the areas in which you are competent and make sure you are up to date in your training. Second, integrity. In all that you do, always be honest trustworthy, and never jeopardize the welfare of other. Third, professional, scientific, and scholarly responsibility. You must adhere to ethical standards strictly, especially in dealing with human respondent. Fourth, respect for people's rights, dignity, and diversity. Respect for cultural and individual differences and work to eliminate bias and discrimination. Fifth, Social responsibility. This includes striving to act for the benefit of others in our society. The following are also the areas in which ethics can be considered in your research. First, informed consent. The respondents and concerned authorities must be informed that the research is being done and that the respondents are being taken into consideration. Offices cannot even give confidential information without assurance that such records will be kept confidential and that they will be used for research purposes only. Second, assent minors as respondents. Assent is the agreeing of respondents after being informed of all the features of the study that could affect the participants' willingness to participate. When dealing with minors as respondents, their parents or legal guardians should be informed of the activity. 
the parents or guardians have to give an approval before the minors are considered as respondents. Third, protection from mental and physical harm. The respondents should not be forced to be a respondent of the study. No physical harm must be inflicted. In the course of the research, the respondents can withdraw from being a respondent, especially if personal privacy is at stake and they do not want to divulge the information. The respondents have all the rights to decide whether or to continue or not. Fourth, confidentiality, anonymity, and the concept of privacy. Confidentiality of the responses or answers of the respondents must be ensured. The names of the respondents must never be disclosed. Information and the recordings that contain the information must be kept in private by the researchers. Fifth, referencing. To avoid plagiarism, researchers have to cite their references. These references must be in text cited and appear in the references section. The difference between quantitative and qualitative research. Qualitative research, a method of inquiry employed in many different academic disciplines, making use of themes to describe certain phenomenon, process, story, case, culture, among others. In short, if data are more on responses, words, observations, and anecdotes, the research is qualitative. While quantitative research refers to the systematic empirical investigation of social phenomena via statistical, mathematical, or numerical data, or computational techniques. Hence, if the data are numbers, the research is quantitative.